Thou shouldest keep them from the evil. If you have received the word, the Lord will keep you from evil. On your way, He'll clear all the evil away from you in Jesus' name. It says in verse 16, They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. See what the Lord Jesus is saying. He says there is an identification between the Christian and Christ, between the believer and Christ who we believe. He said, as the Father has sent you into the world, even so has he sent us into the world. Why did the Father send him into the world? What did he come to do here in the world? If you know what Christ has come to do in the world, then you will know what we are supposed to do. You will know the assignment and the commission and the responsibility the Lord has laid upon you, has laid upon me, has laid upon us. Because he said, as he, the Father, has sent him, Christ, even so, as he sent us into the world, why then was he sent into the world? A great question, an important question, a question you need to think about because it is the answer to that question, why Christ was sent into the world. It is the answer to that question that will show you why you are still here in the world as the Father has sent you him into the world even so as he sent you sent me sent us into the world but looking at luke chapter 19 luke chapter 19 the father sent him to do what the father sent him to the world to accomplish what then you know why the father has sent you into the world as well luke chapter 19 verse 10 for the Son of Man is come to seek what? To seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came. That's why he came. That the Father sent him to seek and to save that which was lost. And if the Father has sent us as well, for the same reason, for the same purpose, why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ, it must be so that sinners will be saved, the lost will be sought and found, and the people who are in sin will recover themselves and they will come to know the Lord. We're looking at John chapter 3, John chapter 3, and we're reading there from verse 18. John chapter 3, let's read from verse 17. John chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 17 for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved that the purpose that the reason that's why Christ came he said as a father has sent me to the world even so have I sent you into the world and the Father sent him to the world so that sinners will be saved. I want you to look at the way you spend the major part of your time and the way you spend the major part of your money and the way you spend the major part of everything that you have. Is it so that sinners will be saved? That sinners will be called into the kingdom of God. That sinners will discover themselves and then return. And return from the way of sin. That's why the Father sent the Lord. And that's why the Lord has sent us. He says in verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Matthew chapter 1, we're reading verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Why did the Father save Christ into the world? 
Because if they are such a bad, that makes you to know why the Father has left you here. Why Christ has left you here. And what you're supposed to do, your involvement in the war, your commission, your commitment to the preaching of the gospel. But look here at Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth his son. And when she bring, brings forth his son, that son will appear here in the world. And thou shalt call his name, what's the name? Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the reason why. That's the purpose why Christ came. And because that is the purpose why Christ came into this world to save sinners from sin, that's why we're here. And the Lord is saying, if we're going to serve him and serve him aright, what we need to do is to do what Jesus Christ came to do in this world. But look here at John chapter 21. John chapter 21. The Lord chapter 20 rather. John chapter 20. The Lord has sent you. And I pray that you will obey the commission in Jesus name. John chapter 20 verse 21. They said Jesus to them again. Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me even so have I also so send I you. As the Father sent him, even so he has sent you. Why are we sent and what are we to tell the world when we go to the people of the world? We well, to tell them that Jesus Christ is a Savior. That salvation is in Christ. That people in the world should leave the world and leave their sin and leave their evil deeds and come to Christ and seek for forgiveness and salvation, redemption through Christ. And as they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they will be saved. That's why the church is established. That's why the Christian is taught and trained and made a disciple so that we as Christians, as disciples, and as the church of the living God, will be able to go out and tell other people that Jesus Christ is the Savior. Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Verse 43. Acts chapter 10. Verse 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall have, shall receive remission of sins. All the prophets give testimony. All the prophets agree on this, that Christ is the Savior. That there is no forgiveness, no redemption through anyone except through the Lord Jesus Christ. All the prophets give witness to this, that through his name, whosoever. Salvation is for everyone. The peace of mind, if you don't have any peace in your mind, you are restless and you are tormented by sorrow, by internal inward turmoil. You come to Christ and Christ will give you peace. Because he is our peace. And he is our redeemer. He is the one that grants us forgiveness. It says to him, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive the remission of sins. That's why we're not ashamed of this gospel. We're going to declare, proclaim, and preach this gospel everywhere we go. And sinners are going to turn to the Lord in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. Romans chapter 1, verse 14. I am dead of both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He had preached the gospel in many places, and I said, I'm going to Rome, I'm going to preach the word of God unto them. And we say, we are ready to. I said, we are ready. And this year, we'll be ready and we'll preach the gospel in Jesus' name. In your office, you'll preach the gospel. On the road, you'll preach the gospel. In the taxis, you'll preach the gospel. 
In the train, you'll preach the gospel. In your community, you'll preach the gospel. In the hospitals, you'll preach the gospel. In the prisons, you'll preach the gospel. Anywhere you find somebody that needs to know about life eternal, about going to heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I, we shall preach the gospel in Jesus' name. We're ready and we're going to do the will of the Lord this year, every day of our lives in Jesus' name. In verse 16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that does what? Everyone that believeth. You know, salvation is the secret of being saved. That's the secret of being born again. That's the secret of coming from darkness and getting into light. That is the secret of the converting, the supernatural power of God touching our lives and turning us around and making a definite supernatural change in our lives. To believe the gospel is not enough just to hear, it's not enough just to know. It's not enough just to have somebody preaching unto us. When we hear that gospel, we must believe because it is the power of God unto salvation, unto everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're reading from verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. But though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid upon me. That necessity is upon every one of us. We must preach the gospel. And we will preach the gospel. For a true Christian, for a real Christian, you cannot have rest except you are living in obedience to the Lord. If you are not living in obedience to the Lord, there will be restlessness. There will be uncertainty, there will be doubt, there will be turmoil in the heart. What gives us peace and rest and what gives us contentment and what gives us satisfaction and joy in the Lord is that we know we are obeying the Lord. That's why it says necessity is laid upon me. Then it says, ye woe is unto me. If I preach not the gospel, we are going to preach the gospel. Then in verse 19, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto, unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. He said, I will sacrifice whatever I need to sacrifice, so that I will not repel the Jews. If I need you, anything I can do apart from sinning, Anything I can do apart from denying the Lord. Anything I can do apart from going away from the will of the Lord. That the Jews will not be repelled and turn away, turn away. I will do so that those Jews by me will hear the gospel. Isn't that a model, a pattern, an example for you and for me? That we're not expecting that as a singers that will make the sacrifice for us to preach the gospel to them. We are to make the sacrifice. We are to deny ourselves and whatever we can do apart from sin. Whatever we can do apart from disobeying the word of God. Whatever we can do so that the sinners will be willing to listen to us. We we'll say we're willing to do. And this year we'll be attracting a lot of people to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. That's why it says, even though I'm praying for all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, and to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are under the law, that are without law. He said, when I go to the Gentiles who don't have the Mosaic law, I'm not going to do anything that will repel them, that will turn them away from the gospel. I will deny myself. I will do whatever it takes so that these people will see, here is a representative of Christ. I pray God will make us the same in Jesus' name. 
And you know there are some people, they feel that is a sinner that doesn't have any grace that will deny himself of something if he wants the gospel preached. So, no, we are the people that have the grace of God. And because we have the grace of God, you want to deny yourself of whatever it is so that you'll not be a hindrance to the people that need to get saved. And then it says in verse 22, to the weak became I as weak. That I might gain the weak. I have made all things to all men, that I might by all means say some, and this I do, for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. And I pray God will give us the same heart in Jesus' name. I will have the same attitude and the same commitment and the same consecration so that anywhere we find ourselves this year, we'll be preaching the gospel. We'll be declaring the gospel and telling sinners they need to come to the Lord. And as they come repenting, as they come believing, as they come surrendering their lives to the Lord, they're going to be saved and born again in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus did it. He went about doing good and preaching the gospel, healing the oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And the apostles did it, and the believers in the early church did it, and we will do it too in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, and we're looking at verse 4. Acts, chapter 8, looking at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad, what did they do? Tell me out loud. Tell me that again. The wage everywhere preaching the word. That's what I'm going to do this year because that's what the Lord has commissioned us to do. What he has commanded us to do. And whatever it is, if you're a believer, whatever your other responsibility, the number one thing is this, that we go everywhere preaching the gospel and we're going to do it so effectively. Many people will come to know the Lord in their multitudes and their great numbers in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two, secured for life with protective signs. The signs and the wonders that protect. The signs and the wonders that preserve. The signs and the wonders that promote. The signs and the wonders that make us secure in the Lord. And he says what Jesus Christ told his own disciples, that as you go obeying me, as you go preaching the gospel, as you go declaring the word of the Lord that saves, then he says the signs, protective signs, preserving signs, will follow the believers. And this year, the signs will follow us in Jesus' name. In Mark chapter 16, verse 17, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and these signs shall follow them that do what? That's why you need to specialize in believing the Lord. Whatever else you've been thinking about, whatever else you've been specializing in, and whatever else you've been looking at in the Word of God, you want to specialize in believing the Word of the Lord this year, that every step you take, everywhere you go, and when you read the Word, all these great promises of God, all these incredible promises of God, all these promises of God that are extraordinary, that brings the miracle working power of God upon our lives and brings the signs and the wonders upon our lives that you'll say whatever it is, I'm going to believe. And as you believe, signs and wonders will follow. I said signs and wonders will follow. And these signs shall follow them. That believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, that he is, it is not that you deliberately do that. No, but no Christian is going to want to commit suicide. Anybody that would deliberately drink a deadly thing, that fellow wants to kill himself. But if accidentally, you don't know, accidentally, mistakenly, you drink any deadly thing, the Lord will preserve your life. Because the number of your days it will fulfill in Jesus' name. 
if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay their hands on the sea. What will happen? They shall recover. Then verse 19, so then, after the Lord had spoken these unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. As we analyze all this, we know that the Lord is safe. We're secured throughout our lives. Every day and every week and every month and every year of our lives, we're secured and protected from Satan. Secured and protected from demons. Secured and protected from sickness. Secured and protected from every calamity and disaster that comes upon the world because we're believers. And because we believe the Lord, these signs will follow every one of us in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, but remember, it says they go and proclaim the gospel as they go and preach the gospel as they go and declare the gospel that the lord had given as they go in obedience to the great commission that the lord has given unto us that is when the signs will follow and because we're obedient children these signs are following us this year in luke chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 17 and the seventy returned again with joy. Every time you come back here for combined service, you are returning with joy. Yeah. You have testimonies to tell, good things to say about what the Lord has done and what the Lord will continue to do. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. If you believe that, it will be true in your life. That any devil, any demon, any attack, any evil power that tries to confront you, you're going to overcome them in Jesus' name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power. This year, what do you have? Power. Do you have fear? No. Timidity? No. Trembling? No. Are you afraid of them? No, this year is a year of power, a year of authority, a year to overcome. And everywhere we go, I told you last week, were you in church last week? Yeah. All those evil paths will dry up. Yeah. Because we're the people of God. And as we stand in the strength, the might, in the force, heavenly force of the Lord, we're going to dry up and destroy every path before us in Jesus' name. Yeah. And he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions will march on them. The serpents and the scorpions, they will not crawl in our body. They will not crawl in our mind. They will not derange or disturb our brain. Serpents and scorpions will not be in your brain. Will not be in your heart. They will not be in your body. They will not be in your blood system. Where will they be? I said, where will they be? That's what Jesus said, and that's what will happen. He says, they shall tread on serpents and scorpions. And over, what kind of power now? How much of the power of the enemy? 100% all of them. This year we're victorious. And that victory is already coming to our lives in Jesus' name over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nothing shall by any means hurt you wherever you are in the valley or in the mountain in the village or in the city you are in your own home or you are in a foreign place anywhere you go this year nothing shall by any means hurt you whether you are with friends or with enemies. But the people that love you, those are lucky people. The people that love you are lucky people because he that blesses you, God will bless. But he that causes you, I pity those people, those enemies are unfortunate. I said those enemies are unfortunate. Whether you are with friends or with enemies, no matter what you do, it says nothing shall by enemies hurt you in Jesus' name.